knows what breathtaking contemporary evidence is out there right now? Well, we don't. But we do know what breathtaking artifacts have recently been discovered, opening a vivid window into the past. Did you know, for example, that the warriors of antiquity took fish, of all things, as their role model? That the inhabitants of the Bronze Age did something that tourists still do today? And that researchers have actually succeeded in reconstructing the smell of the past? Some things never change, while the snake of Escalupian staff is the official symbol of the medical and pharmaceutical profession today, the sinuous motif actually looks back on thousands of years of history. And the people who lived in what is now Turkey 900 years ago also knew exactly what the scaly reptiles meant. This is proven by the medicine vial that was brought to light a few years ago at the Haran excavation site in the southeast of the country. The richly decorated artifact is not only adorned with two intertwined snakes, it also contained residues of the ancient medicine. In detail, the artifact dates from the time of the Zengids, a Turkish dynasty that ruled over northern Syria and northern Iraq on behalf of the Seljuks. The site of Haran is known for its beehive-shaped houses, and according to archaeologists, the discoveries so far indicate that it might also have been an important medical center throughout history. Who did this ancient seal belong to? While we're here, let's stay right in Turkey. However, we'll have to turn back the clock significantly further for the next discovery. Experts believe that the seal, which was recovered in 2018 in the coastal city of Mersin, is no less than 9,000 years old. Found on the ruined hill of Yumakepte, the artifact, which is decorated with geometric patterns, basically indicates private ownership. Whether these patterns were intended to convey a deeper symbolism or whether they merely served as decoration has not been conclusively clarified. The seal was awakened from its long historical slumber as part of a two and a half month excavation project, during which the archaeologists also unearthed Neolithic arrowheads made of obsidian and numerous sling stones. However, it is completely unknown to whom all these breathtaking artifacts once belonged. But according to the researchers, it is most likely that we are dealing with the grave goods of a respected warrior. Make a wish. When it comes to passive income, the Trevi Fountain in Rome is a real winner because the monumental fountain from the 18th century actually collects around 1.5 million euros every year. And not by luring its visitors into some shady WhatsApp group, but because it is said to grant you a wish for a coin or two. In reality, however, this tradition is much older than you might think. In 2022, archaeologists in Gemmering, Upper Bavaria, discovered a wishing well that is over 3,000 years old. And what are small coins in our day were valuable clay vessels and jewelry such as garment pins and amber beads in the Bronze Age. All in all, the researchers recovered dozens of precious objects at the bottom of the well. And just like today, the offerings probably ended up there to help fulfill personal wishes. There are two reasons why these offerings are still in an astonishingly good state of preservation after all this time. On the one hand, there is the soil that has accumulated in the shaft of the well and preserved the relics perfectly. And on the other hand, the objects were probably not simply thrown into the depths, but carefully lowered down as part of a ritual. How the Warriors of Antiquity Were Inspired by Nature Does the term bionics mean anything to you? Basically, this portmanteau word is made up of the terms biology and technology and refers to the creative implementation of inspiration from nature into human technology. And indeed, an extraordinary find from China shows that people were already drawing inspiration from their natural environment 2,500 years ago. Experts in the northwest of the country discovered the grave of a man who was buried with armor consisting of 5,000 leather scales. These are therefore reminiscent of the overlapping scales of a fish. And despite its light weight, the armor is likely to have offered reliable protection in battle. All in all, however, the scaly armor joins an extremely sparsely populated list. A comparable suit of armor comes from the legendary tomb of Tutankhamun. Another leather scale armor of unknown origin is kept in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The Music of the Past 
was played on this 8,500-year-old bone instrument, which was brought to light in the Turkish province of Bilicek. But that's not all. The find may even be the oldest known musical instrument in Anatolia. The fact that the ranks of exciting discoveries have been enriched by another member is again thanks to an attentive local resident. He had informed the Bilicek Archaeology Museum after stumbling across some pieces of pottery in a field in the neighborhood. In the course of the subsequent excavation, 11 human skeletons and numerous seed remains such as lentils, buckwheat, and barley came to light in addition to the bone flute. The somewhat different paddle. Normally, a paddle is used to get a boat from A to B. But as is so often the case, exceptions prove the rule. And the wooden object uncovered by archaeologists in the Bamberg excavation site in northern Italy may have literally served a hotter purpose. In detail, the 6,500-year-old paddle was found on a large platform next to a mound on which there was an impressive pile of stones that had been heated by fire. With this in mind, the experts assume that the paddle was used to remove the hot stones. However, why the stones were heated in the first place has not been conclusively clarified. They may have even been used for cooking, but they could also have been used for brewing, tanning, metal extraction, or even in sweat lodges. The Head of the Maize God For the Maya, maize was not just any food. It was such an important pillar of survival that they even dedicated their own deity to the yellow cobs. This god was called Hanol Ya and was regarded in mythology as the child of the divine creator couple. And although the maize god is described on steel inscriptions in a former Mayan metropolis in Palacu, Mexico, researchers were unaware of any sculptures or statues of this particular deity for a long time. However, this has finally been a thing of the past since 2022, when a head bust of the maize god was discovered for the first time in the palace of Palenque, which had lain dormant in a rectangular basin underground for an estimated 1,300 years. And while the detailed artifact shows how the Maya imagined the maize god, the circumstances of the find indicate that the bust was part of a ritual ceremony. According to this, the east-west orientation of the god's head may have symbolized the sunrise and thus the rebirth of the maize plant. The Maya placed symbolic offerings around the sculpture, including plants, animal bones, shells, and pieces of pottery. The archaeologists also found miniature human figures, countless obsidian blades, green stone beads, and seeds. What did it actually smell like in ancient Mesopotamia? Well, a Turkish research team also asked themselves this question, which is why they quickly consulted the perfume formula devised 3,200 years ago by a certain Taputi. The corresponding cuneiform tablets from Babylonian Mesopotamia not only identify Taputi as the master of fragrances, but also as the world's first recorded female chemist. To flatter the ancient noses, she used oils from flower petals, myrrh, cypress grass, and the plant calamus, among others. The mixture was then mixed with water or other solvents, dissolved and filtered several times. And although all the ingredients of the Taputi perfume have been identified, modern researchers still face some complications in their odor reconstruction. One is the fact the relevant tablets are broken and some important parts have been lost. The second problem is that there are no exact counterparts for some plants and containers used at the time. For example, we don't know what the Hursu jar mentioned in the tablets looked like. Of Tomb Musicians and Terracotta Dancers We are all familiar with the imposing terracotta army guarding the tomb of the Chinese Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi. But did you know that the corresponding figures are sometimes much more upbeat? The unique objects discovered in the tomb from the northern Wei dynasty in the Chinese province of Shangzi certainly prove this. While the collection of grave goods includes figures depicting horsemen, workers, animals, and everyday objects, we also find dynamic musicians, acrobats, and dancers. According to the experts, the precious relics leave no doubt that those buried here clearly belonged to the upper classes. At the same time, the artifacts also provide new insights into social life and burial rites, 
around 1500 years ago. The Romans' Pastime Humans and board games can look back on a long history together. At more than 5200 years old, the ancient Egyptian Senate is considered the earliest known version of this enjoyable pastime. However, the Romans also knew how to sweeten the hours of leisure time. Here, Lantrunculli was the most popular and widespread board game. And a few years ago, experts were able to track down another edition of the Roman classic in the ancient city of Kibra in Turkey. However, it is no longer possible to say with absolute certainty exactly how a game was played there 1800 years ago as no contemporary game instructions have yet been found. What is certain, however, is that the La Trancoli was played by two people who were given the same number of game pieces, and that it was not a game of chance. These were strictly forbidden in the Roman Empire, so if you wanted to win a game, you were better advised to use your own wits instead of Fortuna, the goddess of luck. And if you never want to miss a new video from us again, you should try the subscribe button now. Click on the little thumb and on subscribe to stay up to date from now on.